my last conversation with your dad, he told me you were his favorite son. But Roman Reigns was the son he always wanted. What's going on, YouTube? It's Etsy in the place to be children, Mr. Andy. Bad to give you guys another Monday Night Raw review here uh, for February 6, 2023. This Raw actually was a pretty decent Raw, minus some things that was into it, but I really enjoyed this Raw. I actually sat there and watched it. I was intrigued by it. It's all highlighted, highlighted by the promo between uh, Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman and how personal that thing got. I enjoyed that. Of course, I enjoyed the main event and the return surprise we had there. Brock Lesnar come back in. So we had a lot of things that we got to talk about. So let's get up into this Raw review as we're building close to Elimination Chain, which I think is in... Two we I think it's not this Saturday, but next Saturday is when the Elimination Chamber is. So they they, they, they it's like this, you know, the bridge to get into WrestleMania. So uh let's get into this. So Raw starts out, Edge comes to the ring with Beth Phoenix. And uh, first of all, uh, um Edge got this thing where he just be loving grabbing Beth Phoenix ass. Look, when you when you got a woman as high as Beth Phoenix, y'all know I love Beth Phoenix. Man, I would sit there and just grab that ass too, but she had looked like, yo, would you stop this shit? Like, stop, bro. And, um, but anyway, uh, I don't know if that was, was that, uh, yeah, I believe, believe that was this week's, this week's show. But Edge basically saying, look, Judge Day was my fault, okay? And it's, you know, I, I got, I was helpless at Extreme Rules as, you know, his wife got his head, her head bashed in, and he, you know, he quit the Finn Balor, but now, you know, he, he's cold. He wants his revenge and stuff like that. So uh, they come out, but then Finn Balor and, and Judge Day come out, and then they, they start talking. Uh, Rhea Ripley's not there. So Dom says, you know, Rhea Ripley's not here. She's out, out you know, doing media for WrestleMania and stuff like that. And then uh, David Priest's like, look, man, look, we've been doing this over and over again. All right, then, so you know what? Because right now I got to focus on the match. Uh because he has a qualifying match to go into money and up. Oh, he got messed up. So he had to say, look, Edge got me so frustrated. Elimination Chamber. The Edge just told everybody to shut up. And he told, what, what did he say for the Finn Balor? He said Finn Balor looks like a dollar store version of uh, uh, Jamara K. That old group from back in the day. He told the kids to Google it. Because I was just like, because it was just like, who? Everybody was saying, I'm like, you got to really be older than know that group is. Um. And he said he can't wait for Rip Mysterio to, you know, say get pissed off enough to knock Dominic's teeth down his throat. So, uh, Beth Phoenix said, let's just, let's just cut all this. If you guys got the stones, it'll be Edge and Beth Phoenix taking on Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley at the Elimination Chamber. So, I was just like, mm, okay, we're going to do the mixed tag. Because I, I think the, the blow off is going to be Edge and Balor. At hell, to, uh, not at hell, so at WrestleMania in hell to sell. That that's what I think. I think if those if those rumors had any kind of truth to it for Royal Rumble, then uh, I think they're gonna probably have that the blow off match at WrestleMania. I think that's what the program is gonna lead to. And Dominic goes off with uh, um, his his dad, and then read the Charlotte Priest. I don't know. Priest is gonna be there, so that's why I think everything is headed. Everybody judging day is gonna be locked up. Uh, then we get to the first matchup because Angel Dawkins uh, runs out and starts attacking Judgment Day, which gets us right into our first match with Angel Dawkins taking on Damian Priest. The match is solid. Angel Dawkins uh does, you know, what I'm saying he has shown that you know he can go out there and have good matches without Montez stuff like that. But I already knew coming in this, and everybody else knew coming into this that Angel Dawkins was not going to win this matchup. So after Priest hits the South of Heaven choke slam. On Angel Dawkins, he wins the match to qualify for Elimination Chamber. So there's one spot uh, available uh, when it comes to the United States Championship Elimination Chamber match. Chelsea Green says, uh, comes to the back and you know, seeks the manager and uh, says that she should be a, uh, she's good enough for the Elimination Chamber, basically. And she was approving herself tonight. Dexter Loomis comes out uh, to take on Baron Corbin. So, God, Baron Corbin, just, just so, you know. Y'all know I can't stand Baron Corbin. I ain't gonna stand Baron Corbin for years. Even in his NXT days, I couldn't stand Baron Corbin. Well, right now, it's look like it's, it's actually getting somewhere because uh, Dexter Loomis beats him with his little side slam. I think he's gonna put him in, in there for his, um, you know, his little choke, but he did. And JBL just looks disheveled. Uh, but 
in a, in a future segment, JBL and Barry Corbin walking backstage. And Barry Corbin was just like, you know, whatever. I lost the match, so which one he tonight after that? And then JBL was just like, hold on. You know, I was a sellout champion. He, these all things are not true. They be saying. He said I was, uh, you know, a headliner at WrestleMania, greatest champion, all kind of stuff like that. And you had to turn off the channel appeal. Then Bear goes out, you know, I can change, I can change. And he says, you know, you can't polish a turd because I have tried. So, what's going on, Baron Corbin? I don't know. I was never interested in Baron Corbin like that at all. Some people like, like, Bum Ass Corbin was fine, but Bum Ass Corbin can't be forever, okay? The, uh, that character was fun, but it can't be forever. Applebee's manager, Baron Corbin. You know, Lone Wolf, Baron Corbin, uh, Happy Corbin, none of, JBL Corbin, none of these Corbins is working, okay? So we're going to probably get like another reboot. Maybe Corbin and Lacey Evans have something in common. Who who actually knows? But meanwhile in this segment, you do see MVP talking in back in, in the back with Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. More on that to come. So Brock Lesnar uh, comes out to uh, the ring, and he uh, talks about, look, you know, First of all, he's he out there slapping hands. He's he being a real face and everything like that. He said, "Hey, did anybody see the Royal Rumble?" He said, "Yeah, cause I thought it sucked." And he said, "You know what? Bobby Lashley has struck a chord with him. I cannot stop thinking about Bobby Lashley." He says, uh, "So, uh, you know, I'm walking to you know, I'm ice fishing. Have you been ice fishing? Yeah." Well, how much ice fishing? I'm thinking about Bobby Lashley. He said, well, I'm trying to eat a big steak dinner. I'm thinking about Bobby Lashley. When I get in the bed with my wife, four or five hours later, I'm thinking about Bobby Lashley. And I thought that, that was hilarious. So he said, look, underneath this $5 denim jacket is a multi-million dollar contract that states Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar at Extreme Rules. So Bobby, if you got the balls, you'll come out here and sign it. So Bobby come out there, he in full suit and everything. I'm like, smell that hurt business coming. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you already know it's coming. But I'm just like, but he's getting back into that role. You know what I'm saying? And then Bobby Lashley says, you know. So as Bobby's down there, he says, look, uh, I'll take the contract, but I want to have, you know, my lawyer look over it, my manager look over it, and all that kind of stuff like that. That was official, then I'll get back to you because we do this on my terms. Because I, I, I can remember the first match. That we did last year the Royal Rumble, I won that match. The second match ended on different circumstances, but I can remember I had your ass laid out. Then at the Royal Rumble, I eliminated you with no problem. So what's to say that this is not going to be any different? So how does it feel that Bobby Who has the one up on you and put his finger right in the face? And as he turns around, I'm like, why does Bobby keep doing this? You know what's coming. So Brock hits him with an F5, and then uh, the crowd is all hyped. They're like, one more time, one more time. So then they, he goes and hits him up with F5 again and takes him down. So next week is going to be the contract signing. So here's my thing. I wanted Lesnar and Bobby at Mania, okay, because I, I did that. That's that's a good time to blow this whole thing off. Not elimination chamber. I actually trying to build for it, and there's always a possible way that shenanigans can happen that they, they can make this to the fourth match because it needs to be some kind of stipulation. Now, if this is gonna be like a regular one on one for the third match with between these two. No, but it needs to be some kind of no holds barred or something, which I think you can do at WrestleMania have a, in front of a bigger crowd. I know Bobby, Bobby and Brock with that payday. It could be something involving the Hurt Business getting back together by that time. You know, Bobby gets some help. and then, but I don't want Lesnar going over in the feud. I'd rather have Bobby go over in the feud because Bobby's going to be there longer. Just saying. It also looks like they're, they're, they're trying to build to a Gunther taking on Brock Lesnar at Mania, which is a rumor. And here's the thing. Before everybody jumps down my throat, Brock versus first-time opponents is literally a crapshoot. It really is. For every AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, or Finn Balor match, there is a Strowman, Ricochet, or a uh, Dean Ambrose. They just, and you recognize Dean Ambrose and Ricochet are not big guys. Because I, I know if, if I said all little guys on this side and it started with Strowman, thinking, you're thinking all big guys. No. 
for every one of three great matches that we got from, from AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, and Finn Balor, or Dan Bryan, however you want to call him, those are great matches that Brock Lesnar had. But Strowman, no. Ambrose, no. And Ricochet, no. And it was just like, so you never know. It's like whoever Brock is feeling like I'm, I respect right now is what's going to be. Gunther, if they're going to try to make him break any kind of championship record or if they try to make him build up right after the momentum of, of staying in number one at the Royal Rumble, having him go in there, he's a match to this. That's the whole Imperium gimmick, the, you know, being sacred in the ring. Having him go in there and just take German suplex and belly to belly and German suplex, stuff like that, and F5 call it a day. No, I mean, well, he put on some offers where he gets some chops in, but he's not going to have the Sheamus level match with Lesnar like they did at uh, Clash of the Castle. He, Brock ain't going out. He's not going to want to do all that. And that's wrestling, okay? This is not 2003 Brock Lesnar. This is now Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's in there for a fight. Would it be cool to, like, to, to touch that back down at SummerSlam? Sure. But right now, I, I, I don't know. I just don't see it. I'd rather... I'd rather have the story come back and have Sheamus win. Cause I'm, I'm still a component of Sheamus winning the kind Intercom of champion that he never had, opposed to being a Honky Talks record. But once again, neither here or there. That's stuff you guys can talk about, argue about, and post that in the comments down below. Women's Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup fatal four way Carmella Pep Pep versus Pep Piper Niven, damn, Candice LeRae, and Micha Mia. So Carmella is back there. The F A B O L O U S. But, the, oh my God, this these new songs bother the hell out of me, okay? These new type of songs that they got for these superstars is, like, truly bothering me. Because I miss the F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S, yes. Like, I, I miss that Carmella song. and But now it's got this, like, that, like this little generic... Doo, 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 doo. I'm like, oh my God. I... Bring somebody back. Work out something with CFOs back. Work out something with Jim Johnson. Work something out. Because these generic songs is just terrible. It's bad enough that we took away the music videos. You know, like the Titan Tribe music videos. So now we got, just got to deal with this generic shit. Uh, so the match, the match is fine. Piper never kind of dominates. She does like a running uh, big girl slam. Like cross by that she threw on all three, uh, all three of the members. But uh, the match goes to end because... Carmella uh, <clears throat> gets a Bronco Buster on uh, Candice LeRae, and then she uh, is uh, a super kick and wins the matchup. Did not see that coming. Now, I, I, I agree that Carmella has been through a lot, so I'm glad to see her come back and get recognition, but I did not see her win. I thought Piper Devin was going to win, but it doesn't really matter because I think Oscar's going to be the winner of the other chamber. So it's like, who do I want to feed to Oscar? You know what I'm saying? Cedric Alexander and Sean Benjamin are out with MVP. They're not calling her business yet, but they're out there taking on Alpha Academy. This matchup was actually pretty good, and the crowds are getting more into it towards the end of the matchup, between, especially the exchange between Gable and uh, Alexander. Alexander dives through the ropes, and then Gable catches him like a T-bone, and T-bones him to the, to the outside. When they come back in, uh, Alexander's down, and Otis, uh, Otis is, comes in, but Benjamin comes and gives him two high knees in the corner, then gives him a Samoan drop, though it's very impressive. And then uh, Alexander gives a lumbar check. Great move. Lumbar check to uh, Gable, and they win the matchup. Well-needed win for if they're going to try to put the Herpes back together because these guys are looking at as jobbers. So they need some wins under their belt to help be convincing, like, hey, we, 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 we're getting back on track to getting the Herpes back on track. And I'm like, okay, I'm with that. Okay, and, and get get them belts all back on there, stuff like that. Now, I think this one's probably going to be with Omos. Do I really care about Omos being in the group? No, but I think you, you got to find a better way to book Omos, to be honest with you. Chelsea Green is out next to take on her opponent that Anna Pierce has set up for her, and it is none other than the murder clown Oscar. Okay, Oscar comes out to do clown face me and everything like that, but here is my problem. Chelsea Green got offense, okay? I'm, I I can be all with the Karen character and stuff like that, but Chelsea Green got offense on this version of Oscar. This gotta be a different version. It's like the demon Finn Balor. Okay, you just don't do certain things to that, you know, to, to that version of that character. And she's in there, and, and you know, and she's like getting offense. And then all of a sudden, all the participants in the elimination chamber are surrounding the ring, observing this. And then Asa comes back up, 
and then she puts her in this arm bar and she submits. Meanwhile, Bianca Belair comes down to the ring and she talks about, you know, uh, you know what I see? I see six uh, top tier talent women, but uh, who's going to get a shot at the EST of WWE stick and uh, who will go to WrestleMania? It got to be Oscar. It Marquee matching and business alone. This is going to be one of the biggest WrestleManias ever because of sales. Okay, the thanks to Triple H. So you're going to go with the marquee matchup, Oscar and Bianca Belair, which is a match that really had never happened before. Or you can see uh, Raquel in there because they got uh, her and Bianca got a little bit of history. They probably get the rub, but I'm going more. It needs to be Oscar. Okay, it ain't going to be Carmella. It ain't going to be Natalia. It ain't going to be Liv Morgan. It ain't going to be none of that. Okay, just, just saying. Now, it's time for the segment of the night. Cody Rose comes out. Cody Rose still getting cheered. I know people are, you know, scared. I'm not scared. This is not a Daniel Bryan situation here. The Sami Zayn thing is not a Daniel Bryan situation. You know why it's not a Daniel Bryan situation? Even Daniel, even Sami Zayn said on, on, on Aaron Hawani's interview. Because the storyline, it's a storyline that's being told right. The Daniel Bryan thing was something that was, they, they hated the storyline that, that WWE was giving them. And they went, you know, and the storyline was already right there, but they they just kept ignoring it. That would make them angry, and they grew that whole yes movement because nobody asked for Batista. I'm a huge Batista fan, but nobody asked for Batista. Nobody wants Batista in Orton main event. That's a Vince McMahon type main event. Not that everybody wanted Daniel Bryan, especially after the way he, he lost after SummerSlam when Randy Orton cashed it in. This is not that situation. All right, I, I see people online talking about the Cody thing and how you know people are gonna you know bring up Sami Zayn. They can fuck the whole thing up, but I have faith in Triple H knowing that uh, how we're gonna do it, and I think they addressed all that in this promo because Cody came out there and said, uh, "What do you want to talk about?" Knowing the crowd is gonna say Sami Zayn, right? So uh, as the crowd is all chanting Sami Zayn, and he says, "You know, I'm challenging," you know. For the championship at WrestleMania. And notice I said the championship because there's a roadblock in the Elimination Chamber uh, with the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns going up against Sami Zayn. And he says, Well, you know, when it comes to Sami Zayn, uh, best of luck to you because it lo looks like that we can have Cody Rhodes versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania. That's not going to happen. But uh, so he wishes Sami Zayn the best of luck and made the best man win. So now the fans chant for Cody, who endorsed Sami Zayn, their fan favorite, because a Vince McMahon movie would have had Cody just completely ignore it. Go with his promo, act like he doesn't hear that kind of stuff. you got to acknowledge this kind of stuff. And then when you endorse that, that Bayface was Bayface, knowing that it's not going to happen, but you have enough casuals in there that think that it could happen, Cody still seems like the good guy. you got to do it that way. But then we hear Paul Heyman come out. He comes out from the back and comes in there to congratulate Cody for winning the Royal Rumble and shook his hand and... Um, Talking about, you know, we've been very busy on our end of what uh, things has been going on, but we never acknowledge your world rumble win, things like that. And then Cody says, you know, uh, he has respect him, man. He said, you know, my dad comes to, real, you know, my family has really said to him, they, 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 they called him by name, but I'm going to call you Mr. Heyman. He said, I want to tell a little story. He said, back in 2000, uh, we was broke. You know, and we just had like my dad just had a hundred dollars in the account for just all of us, and he did this car, these car commercials, not only for you know, not not for the money, but it's to keep his car because all he has is a car and, and, and that money. And um, he said, he, Paul Heyman called because ECW was in town, and he and then he said that you know uh, he was going to you know the superstars going to throw some shots at Dusty Rhodes. And he wanted Dustin Rose to come out and he'll pay him, he'll pay him well. And he did that, he kept his promise. Because Paul Heyman does not keep his promise on a lot of other things. And paid Dusty well. And it gave his dad his confidence back. And Cody thanked him for that. Uh Paul Heyman, like, was welling up with tears and anything like that. Like very emotional. He said, you know what? You caught me off guard. You caught me off guard with that. I know he was gonna go that go, go, go down that way. So look, if we're gonna go shoot from the hip, you know, let's go all the way with it then, right? And he says, look, I love your dad, but this is not always not about your dad. It's not about, you know, me or Charlie. It's, it's about you. It's about all the things that you worked your way uh, for coming up 
and adversity and things like that and uh, came from the bottom and out the door and back in WWE when the Roman main event at WrestleMania uh, but he says you know you have no idea what it's like to be in that spotlight against the biggest box office attraction of all time Roman Reigns will you crumble under that spotlight will you self-destruct under that pressure you know um, and the reason for that being if you really think about it Cody Rhodes okay We've had, when Cody Rhodes first came in back in like 07, we was teaming with Harker Hyde and they, and they did the whole legacy thing. Okay, he had WrestleMania matches. Yes, he had, you know, the triple threat with Order Ted DiBiase. He's been in Money in the Bank. Uh, He's been in ladder matches, stuff like that, at Stardust. He's been at WrestleMania's. You know, he had dashing. Cody Rhodes going against Rey Mysterio in that one year. But those are undercard matches. The main event of WrestleMania Night 2, the last match, the one that gets all the special entrances, the one that gets all the fireworks, the one that's supposed to be match of the year, all that kind of pressure. Cody Rhodes has never been there. AEW can't compare to that. I'm sorry. I love AEW too. But he not having a main event match at AEW or, or the AEW pay-per-view is not in front of 70,000 uh, millions and millions of people watching and paying for a WrestleMania, the biggest wrestling show in wrestling. Cody never been there. So Paul asked those legit questions like, will you such a, how would you handle the pressure? Will he come out crying like Bianca Belair did when it was her Sasha Banks? Because that moment was so big. It was so heavy. Even Sasha almost cried, but she had to stay in character because she's, you know, She's been in, in these moments, but I'm just saying, but the main event for two black women at WrestleMania, that's, you know, that's pressure. So, he said, right down the street, because they were in Orlando, uh, right down the street with the Performance Center, where your dad trained some of the best in this business and helped some of the best in that business. He said he trained and prepped the likes of Seth Rollins, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Kevin Owens, and Roman Reigns. People don't a lot of people don't remember, or they just came to wrestling. Roman Reigns was in NXT. You know, back in the FCW days before they went to NXT. Yes, he was he was there. And Dusty Rose had a big part of that. And he said, you know, but he did not train Cody. Uh he said as a father myself, maybe he didn't train because he wanted to, you to get through life on your own and you want, you know, to get, get out your dad's shadow. Uh, but I want to tell you something that uh, your dad told me, you know, that one of the last conversations I had with your father. And he said um, that Cody, you were his favorite son. And Cody was just like, you know, that take it back like that, like, out of all the sons, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Between me and Gold, that's just me. <laughs> but, he was saying, but, um, but Roman Reigns was the son he always wanted. Mic drop. That right there, I was like, God! Yeah, see? That's how you do it. That's why I was just like, I'm not worried. Triple H, in all, in all I trust, I'm not worried because now you did that, you made it personal. Which automatically gets the crowd behind Cody. But Cody wasn't done. Cody walks up. Heyman like he's about to fight him. And the homie, homie like, oh, uh, homie. Heyman is like, oh, I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. Cody extends his hand out. And he says, I'm just trying to win a wrestling belt. And everybody wants to make it personal. Even though Cody has a lot of personal stuff in his promo stuff like that. Uh, and that's what he just did. So, Mr. Heyman, Roman Reigns is going to pay for this, and I'm going to take his titles personally. Awesome. It was awesome. The crowd's behind Cody, and like it's like that, but now they, they've done this, okay? Because it's like, what is going to get them uh, into the storyline? I, I know Paul Heyman it has his hands in the storyline because Paul Heyman is just excellent. And I know with Paul Heyman and Triple H and all these guys working on it, they're going to make this the best story they possibly can with 
Cody still get because Cody deserves this. Cody getting over and still because Sammy gonna get his moment in the Elimination Chamber, but he's not going to win. And, not, and, and we're not going to have a damn bar situation because the story is t is too good and it's already telling stuff. Him and KO need to go get them tag team titles, and they're going to get those. But Cody Cody has to do this, especially when they're going to keep it personal. And I, I'm now I'm curious of how this story is going to play out each week, especially going into. Uh, elimination Chamber. I think Elimination Chamber. There may be another segment because Cody scheduled for a match. So I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. So after they just sucked the energy out the building, we had Montez Ford taking on Elias, which look, it, it's hard to come back from that. But Montez found a way to get the crowd back into it, doing his high flying dives and doing. He always does like this, this running dive. Where he does this on the corner of the turnbuckle and he be scaring me all the time because I'm like he be coming really close <laughs> I'm like flip flip before he like just falls down and it hits the giant fall switch on Elias and wins the matchup so uh there he was on, on commentary this whole time then when Montez won he got on the table and started talking then Seth Rollins came out tripped up theory in his loud obnoxious stuff and just started singing with the crowd to his own song so they got the crowd Montez and Seth got the crowd back into it because they was like sucked out of it. It was Elias, okay? Main event time was a steel cage match between Bailey and Becky Lynch. The match that we did not get at Raw 30, so we got it now. Dakota Kai uh, injured herself at the Rumble. Her niece, he was out there on crutches in the EO Sky. Earlier, Becky told Byron Saxon that she has uh, a plan up her sleeve just to, you know, in case with the damage control stuff. So, uh, the matchup was pretty good. I enjoyed the cage match that they had. Bailey gives Becky a. Uh, top or like, like they're on the middle of the rope, hanging on the cage, and gives her a belly to belly off there. Becky Lynch kicks out, so that is no longer Bailey's finishing move. <laughs> so, uh, there was a, uh, one point when they're on top of the cage, and Bailey, I mean, Becky turns stuff around, gives Bailey and disarm her, and then Bailey falls down. So, then when she when Becky's about to climb down, EO climbs up. So now they're both on top of the cage, hitting each other, and then uh, Dakota slides in one of her crutches to uh, Bailey, and she hits Becky Lynch, and Becky comes back down. And then also you hear it's Lita. Lita comes down. She got to make sure she do her little dance at the top of the ramp. Like <laughs> she does that, runs down the ramp, and then she takes out uh, Eo Sky. And I don't know. If she pushed. Uh, she she's chasing down Dakota Kai because she can't do anything. And as Bella's about to come through the door, Lita just takes the, the cage door. And just says <laughs> like the the lightest. Cage door slam I've ever seen. I'm like, this is not. We have seen some cage door slams like, God, that hurt. But no, and you ain't got to do it that hard. But I mean, my God, put some power in it. Bailey had to do her best to sell it. And then Becky gives her the. Man, I hate the man handles it. Like, Becky's moves are just. I'm sorry. She gets no air on anything like that. She gets nothing. It it's not even the bookhead, okay? It's just like, oh, uh, like. Everybody else is doing all the work, okay, with, with, when it comes to, like, some of Becky's stuff. But then Becky wins the matchup, and then her and Lita celebrate in the ring. So it looks like if Dakota is good in time, I can see them doing damage control, taking on Lita, Trish, and uh, Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, just saying. But, guys, that was my Raw review. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Post in the comments down below how you, how you guys like it. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed my uh, review for it and hit the subscribe button for more WWE content, W2K content, pop culture content right here on NC Studios. Once again, it's NC, a place to be. Children, Mr. Andy, and the Nerd Coalition is out.